happen rather than doing what he came here for. So, it is a young American team we'll be seeing tonight. Competitors like Scott Keswick, who typifies what could be the future for this American team. Or Cheney Humphrey, who's already begun to make an impact in international competition and whose future seems limitless. Signs are bright for the future, but the future may not be today. Dedication. Athleticism. Dairy defying the extremes. Grace. This is the sport of gymnastics. These are its championships. We welcome you to the 1991 World Gymnastics Championships. We are in Indianapolis, Indiana. You know, these championships have been around for a long time. They started way back in 1903. There were only four teams then, hardly a world championship. Well, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Belgium, and France are still here, but they've now been joined by 44 other teams. And there is a competition within a competition. The top 12 teams in tonight's competition will wind up in the Olympic Games in Barcelona. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with Kathy Johnson and Bart Connor. And Bart, let's talk first of all about this United States team. They were dealt a rather serious blow right out of the box. And there's no question that they're hurting in the team competition tonight. What happened in the compulsory round is Lance Rignall, the most experienced U.S. team member, tore his pectoralis muscle as he was performing an iron cross on the rings. Because Lance had to withdraw from the competition, the U.S. has only five members. Typically, there are six, and you count the best five scores in each event. Because Lance is out, the U.S. has only five members on each performance, and they'll have to count every score. It's going to be very tough on them. Extremely tough, and that's probably an understatement. Kathy Johnson and hard for me to imagine the Soviets have only been in world championships since 1954 and since that time all they've done is win 237 medals and in team competition 17 golds hard to imagine anything's going to be different tonight the Soviets are certainly a class above the rest they have a four-point lead which in gymnastics is insurmountable I can't say enough about this team each of the six gymnasts have won a major international competition they're very capable of scoring nine eight or better on every single event and their level of difficulty is astounding Igor Korobchinsky the defending world champion is here to defend his title but he'll be hard-pressed by Vitaly Sherbo who is a rock in competition all right Bart let's assume then that the Russians will go ahead and win the gold medal who's gonna win the silver and who's gonna win the bronze now this is gonna be very close because it comes down to three teams Japan China and Germany they're separated by less than one-tenth of a point so it's gonna come down to the last performance and here are the standings after the compulsory competition the Soviet Union as you might expect comfortably in first place but the battle here Bart not so much only for the medals but rather for something even bigger that's right. As a matter of fact, the top 12 teams from this competition will go on to compete in the Olympic Games. And only the top 12, Great Britain, is sitting right now in number 12 spot. And of course, an international event like this, you would expect a very international crowd. And that's what we've had throughout the competition here so far in Indianapolis. The Swiss on hand in mass to support their team. And they've done very well. As you look at Daniel Jubalini, and he has been the leader of this Swiss team. And there's such a great tradition in Swiss gymnastics, and they always show up in force with the cowbells and the Swiss flags, and gymnastics dates back to a couple hundred years ago back in Germany and Switzerland when many of the sports clubs initiated gymnastics programs, and they've had some great ones. Josef Stalder was a great Swiss gymnast many years ago, and the team is on the way back, and Jubilini is a leader of this program. You'll see on the pommel horse, he fulfills the requirements here, he needs to touch all three sections of the horse. Look at his toe point. Very good form. This is the single leg work. These moves are called scissors. Those are a little low. They could be just a little higher. Okay, strong dismount. Bart, I know he's happy to get through that one because he had trouble in the compulsors on this event. Only scored an 8875. And let's take a look at how he fulfills one of the requirements that judges are looking for. He works from the end. He travels up to the first pommel, across to the second pommel, and all the way down to the other end. He fulfills the requirement of touching all three sections of the pommel horse right there. Good job. And another requirement is the single leg work. These are scissors, and actually his hips should be going a lot higher on the top end of the swing. And he moves into flare work, of course, this is always very popular with the audience. And right on up to the handstand dismount. 
And again, you can hear the crowd, and it's not as though he is 5,000 miles away from his native Switzerland. Plenty of support here as he awaits his score, and he gets it, and he is very happy with it. 9-7 for Jubilini. Neil Thomas of Great Britain now preparing for his competition in the rings. You saw his compulsory score. Remember, Great Britain and Switzerland right now locked in a battle. They are 11th and 12th, and the 12 teams, first 12 teams here, qualify for the team competition at Barcelona. Neil Thomas is especially good on the floor exercise, but one of the reasons he's so valuable to the British team is he's a strong all-around performer on all six events. You'll see here great swing work right up to the handstand and solid. Iron cross. That was a little short. He needs to hold that two seconds to get the full value of the move. He's picked up some swing here. Notice the rings are swinging. That's a slight deduction. Strong dismount, though. Neil Thomas of Great Britain. Guy who says he's into bungee jumping. You would expect he'd do pretty well in the rings, wouldn't you? That's the kind of person that makes a great gymnast, Barry. A bungee jumper. Well, this bungee jumper accepting the plaudits of his teammates. Remember, Great Britain and Switzerland are locked in a battle right now. And we'll see if this helps his team a little bit. Another look at Neil Thomas. This was certainly a very solid routine. Right off the top, he'll lower into an iron cross, one of the strength elements necessary in the routine. Many of the top gymnasts now are doing three and four strength elements. Really, the best part of his exercise is this segment right here, the double front between the rings, the Yama Yamawaki. And you can really see on this next replay, this is dismount, a piked half in, half out. But you can see he loses a little bit of form. The legs come apart. The toes aren't quite pointed. That's where he loses some tenths of a point. Well, we'll see what it cost him now as Neil Thomas and the rest of his British teammates wait for his score. And there it is, 9-5-2-5, all being considered not too bad for Neil Thomas. These World Gymnastics are brought to you tonight by Diet Coke. You're going to drink it just for the taste of it. And by Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn. Perfect popcorn is our passion. Barry Tompkins with Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson. These are the world championships. We are looking at the next to last rotation now. These are the Romanians, Adrian Catanu on the high bar. Still to come, of course, the Soviet Union, the United States, the Germans. Catanu opens with a one arm giant swing right here to a Ginger. Oh, it's out just a little too far. So that will cost him, of course. How much will it cost him? Actually, the judges take off five-tenths of a point, and he's allowed to continue the exercise from the point where he falls off. But that's going to really hurt their team. Let's see if we can see what happens here. He has good speed and good height. He's just a little too far out. He's 5'6". He probably wished he were about 5'7". He might have caught that. Would have made it. And as you said, that's really going to hurt Romania. They're in eighth place after compulsory. They finished sixth at the last World Championships. Here's a name you might be hearing a little bit more in the sport of gymnastics as the years go on, Yuri Kecki of Italy. We saw Yuri Kecki win the European Cup this past spring in Belgium. And one of the main reasons he won the competition was because of his great work on the parallel bars. And you can see he's just ripping through this routine. He's a very intense competitor. Notice he has excellent form. Very precise in all of his movements. That's impressive to the judges. Well done. So a very good routine for Yuri Kecki. See if that sets the tone. And he has plenty of support too. We mentioned the fact, even though this is very much an American soil, plenty of support for almost every, especially European team. Bart, as you said, he is so aggressive in competition. He really attacks every single move. Nice peach, right to handstand. Strong giant work. He always keeps perfect form. Legs are always straight, toes pointing. Now look at the dismount. It's a pike double back. A little bit harder to land than the tuck. He really goes for it. 
So Yuri Keki of Italy. Italy has never won a gold medal in World Championship competition. 9-7-2-5, the score for Keki. As we look at Neil Thomas now, who we saw a moment ago, now we will see him in the ball. We mentioned that Thomas is a strong tumbler. He's also an explosive vaulter. Look at that. Great Britain trying to stay in front of France for that 12th and final position for the Olympic Games. There's a lot happening in this vault, Kathy. You can really see the amount of push he gets off the horse, and he's got to to crank two twists around before he lands. And you're going to hear crowd sounds all over the place, and the reason for that is, of course, all the disciplines going on simultaneously in this team competition. It really, literally is a three-ring circus as we look at Marios German of Romania on the high bar. German is the most experienced of the Romanian gymnasts here. He's got a very difficult high bar routine. There's an important move coming up right here. Well done. Just to add a footnote on Adrian Catanu, who we saw a few moments ago, nine even, despite the fall. This is a good exercise for German. He showed two good release moves, and he has a very impressive dismount. It's going to be a laid-out double flip with two twists. Let's see if he can make it. Here it comes. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Beautiful dismount, and boy, do they need that. Not only do they have the 9.0, but also a 9.05, and they're looking to drop one of those slow scores. So German strides off, and that is the face of a confident man right now. This is the front with a full twist. Boy, that's difficult to catch. Broke just for him just a little bit. We'll take one more look at this. Here's the dismount. Beautifully done. Double twisting, double back. Laid out position. And look at that landing. Really stuck it. So German waits for his score. And there it is. 9-7-2-5 for Marius German of Romania and that clearly will help his team after a couple of subpar performances still a lot more to come we're at the World Gymnastics Championships and we're coming back to Indianapolis after this well Barton Kathy there was news beyond the mats here in Indianapolis this week South Africa appearing as an entity for the first time in more than two decades. They, of course, were banned from competition because of the political policies in South Africa, and that's true not only in gymnastics, but in every international sport. Really good to see them back. And they enjoyed such a wonderful, warm welcome at the opening ceremonies. Next to the Americans, they got the loudest ovation. Alan Daly, and we show you this performance not so much because it was a dramatic performance, but just that it was a performance at all. final decision was made here at in, in Indianapolis at the World Championships as to whether or not the South African gymnasts would compete. It was a very easy decision. They had never broken relationships with the FIG or the International Governing Body of Gymnastics. So once things started to make way with the politics, the decision was made. And Alan Daly summed up the feelings not only for himself, but all his teammates. Uh, it was a great feeling. You can't really explain it in words, but I mean, you you just get goosebumps all over and you see the flag getting waved in the crowd for the, for the first time and it's just an unbelievable feeling. You go all lame in the legs and you just can't get the smile off your face. And you know, you look ahead to the Olympic Games now and this truly will be a worldwide Olympic Games assuming the status remains quo. It's really a positive sign. Marian Penef now of Bulgaria on the pommel horse. And the Bulgarians are so exciting on this event. Watch the difficulty in this routine. Notice he traveled all the way across with the flares. Back across the pommel horse again. The scissors are just a little low. There's plenty of difficulty in there. And again, you heard the chanting going on while he was performing, and that is because, and we've said this a little bit earlier, but at the risk of belaboring a point, it's got to be very difficult to concentrate just because the crowd is not only reacting to you, but reacting to everything else around you. Exactly. There are six events all going on at the same time. Some gymnasts like it, actually, when there's a lot of activity. It, if it's quiet, sometimes it's more nerve-wracking. 
But look at the work and the elevation over the pommels as he travels all the way across the horse in the straddled or flared position. Now on the scissor work, notice his hips are just a little low. And he doesn't have complete extension. There will be slight form deductions there. But he cranks the dismount right up to a handstand with a pirouette. So we'll see how well that difficulty rewarded Marion Penef as he awaits his score. And there it is, 9575 for Penef on the pommel horse. And the judges have been judging a little tight over there, and they're really watching those form deductions. You had the idea. I don't speak Bulgarian, but it sounded to me, like I said, right on. That wasn't too bad. And here is a look at Sylvester Cholani of Hungary. Watch this guy's strength work. From a cross, he pulled up to an inverted cross. He is really powerful on the rings. There's an original combination right up to a move called a Maltese cross. Down to another iron cross. You've seen at least four strength moves already. You get the impression he's in a little bit of a hurry, though. He doesn't seem to be holding all of the positions. I have to think, too, that just this building gives these performers a little bit of a different look than they're used to. Remember, this is really a football stadium that has been curtained off. It's a huge building, and there's a lot of ambiance in that building. As we look at Yuri Kecki now, who we saw a moment ago, this time we see him on a high bar from Italy. What do you suppose the sense of the surroundings has to do with the competition here? Well, this facility is absolutely wonderful, but you're right, it is huge. And it is a little different when you're in an unusual lighting situation and when the ceiling is so high because often you use the ceiling and the floor when you're spinning and flipping to catch the vision so you can spot the landings. It's a little difficult in a huge place like this. Yeah, I remember by way of comparison as we watch Keki complete his routine when we were in Stuttgart for the last World Championships a much more intimate gathering as you look at the Italian fans who are really supporting their team but a very different look in Stuttgart as there is here in Indianapolis. This is the American way, the big buildings. And the big event. You know, a funny story about Yuri when we spoke to him at the European Cup in Brussels in June. We asked him what his favorite event was and said the high bar, but he wasn't good at it. This is certainly his weakest event, but he does enjoy it. And he does a very nice job here, though. It's not quite as difficult as some of the top routines. There's a double layout dismount. Nice stretch, body position. And just a little hop on the landing. So Yuri Kecki of Italy. Many feel very much of an up-and-comer in this sport at 21 years old. Meanwhile, Sylvester Cholani, 9725. We saw him on the rings a moment ago. And a look once again at Yuri Kecki and people, as you mentioned earlier in Italy, speaking very, very highly of this young man. There's no question. He's the best gymnast out of Italy in the last 25 years since the great Franco Menichelli. So he is looking for his score. The crowd is looking for his score. And so are we. And there it is, 9725 for Yuri Kecki. So we come to the end now of the fifth round. Still to come, the Soviet Union, Germany, and the United States. The American team, as you can see, loosening up in a workout room just adjacent to the main arena here as they await their opportunity in a final rotation. And here's a man who is cast in the role now, really, of nothing more than cheerleader. And Bart, here is the reason why. Now, two days ago in the compulsory round, this is what happened to Lance. He was doing the compulsory ring routine. And as he lowered through this strength move, he's going to do a kip to an cross right here, an important strength move, and what happened was he tore his pectoralis muscle. It wasn't clear at the time. Obviously, you can see with the grimace of his face that there was some sort of injury, and Lance chose to stop the exercise and get it diagnosed. And you can see the pain that he was in and being tended to right after that by the team trainer trying to centralize exactly where it was and what happened. And then, of course, there was the obligatory show and tell to the media assembled here. We had a chance to catch up with Lance Ringdahl and ask him what this all means to the team. It's a team. It's really a team thing, you know. But you're six individuals, now five, going out there, doing the best you can as an individual to accumulate. And it's not that you're all alone. It is a team. You've got five other guys down there cheering you on. They're understanding and they know exactly how you feel, you know. 
And just knowing that helps you to compete. It's real simple that way. But uh, there's not one person on the team that couldn't be a leader of the team at any point. You know what I don't like? I don't like people coming up and say, oh, God, that's too bad, as if it's traumatic. I'm still Lance. I'm still alive. I still have several things I want to do in gymnastics. Uh, my body can only do so much. But my body is just like any others. It's hurt now, it will heal, and I will continue. Unfortunately, it was at the World Championships where, you know, it just couldn't take anymore. And as far as frustrating, it's... I don't know, I'm not a negative person at all. I don't feel that way at all. I feel I've had World Championships already. Some of the guys haven't. I've had Goodwill Games. I've had the Olympics already. The thing that hurts my heart and soul is they've got five that go up and five that count now. I can't help the team now. We trained for the last two months on and off for a team competition. And that's, that's what I've got drilled in my head. That's the feeling that every one of us had going into this competition. And now I'm not part of that. And I feel bad for putting the pressure on the team of, yeah, you can't make any mistakes now. Whereas before, you've got a little leeway. Some other gymnasts can pick up the slack. It's not that way anymore. As far as the injury, my body's just like any others. It'll heal. Right now, I can't help the team. And that's, that's more disturbing than anything else. I'm the most fortunate gymnast. It's, yeah, I, I sprained my ankle in 1989, you know, that real long year. And I got healed up in like four, maybe six weeks as 100%, and I was competing again, just like that. You know, and that, that's it. You know, in gymnastics, as much as everyone thinks that, wow, it's so risky, we've got pits, we've got mats, we've got everything, injuries really aren't a big problem. I mean, you compare it to football and other things like that, it's, it's not even the same category. But as far as this, I've never had an operation. Uh, this is, well, you don't know how bad it is yet. I don't know how bad it is. And from what they're saying, it's sounding pretty good. Uh, it's just uh, going to take some time to heal up, and then we'll take it from there. Come on, man. So instead of participant, he is now in the role of holler guy. He's ah, the guy he's giving totally attaboys better. instead of contributing <laughs> tens. <laughs> and right now, right he is with Kathy <laughs> Johnson to yeah. inquire what is the that extent of the injury. Lance, first of all, the latest update on the shoulder. Well, they've diagnosed it as a torn pec, but it's not completely torn. It's just a small rip. So they've given me two options. I can either operate, which allows them to go in and see exactly what's happening, or I can choose not to have an operation, see if I can rehab it and train there. It's, it's almost like a question mark if I don't get an operation, though. Have you made the decision yet? I've had a first opinion. I'll wait for a second and third opinion to finalize my decision, but we're leaning towards an operation right now. Well, being the team player that you are, I know this was really particularly tough for you to be out of the team competition. What now can you do to help the team? Uh, be as much of a 16 member as I can. Cheer them on, help the crowd get involved, and, you know, what can you say? There's not a whole lot you can do from the crowd, you know, but everything I can possibly do, I'm going to be doing. Great. Thanks. Thank you. And a tough task, to be sure, for the United States. Final rotation when we come back to Indianapolis after this. Well, the United States team making its way onto the floor to the cheers of the fans here in Indianapolis. But to say that it is a tall order to move up in the team competition here tonight is to make a great understatement. They do not have the luxury of dropping off the low score because of the injury to Lance Ringdahl. So it's going to be very, very difficult. But still, what a great thrill. It certainly is a thrill when you march in in front of a home crowd and you feel that energy and that support. Boy, it's easy to perform. And the Soviet Union, the leaders and the overwhelming favorites to continue their dominance. Sure didn't seem like two years ago that the three of us were in Stuttgart, Germany, what was then West Germany, actually, for the last World Championships. And then, like now, it was an event that was pretty much dominated by the Soviet Union, at least on the men's side. We talked about the fact that it was a very different atmosphere in Stuttgart. And you can see right here, as we watch Valentin Mogilny, different kind of facility different kind of crowd everything very different about it except the leaders except the leaders and except the wonderful performance of people like Mo Gilney typical of all the Soviets they have such elegant extension perfect form look at the beautiful line Wow he has since retired of course but he has left a pretty good legacy Igor Korobchinsky was a champion in Stuttgart he was the all-around champion and a surprise to win the all-around but the reason he won once again is because of his clean body line, wonderful swing work. Notice the control of the rings and look at the acrobatics. And the Chinese really starting to make a mark both in men's and women's gymnastics these days. And it was a very big moment for Li Jing from China. He took third in the all-around. I think he surprised himself. 
but the Chinese are explosive and very clean, and they really rival the Soviets in many ways. A United German team for the first time in a world championships. This is Silvio Kroll. The most experienced of all the German competitors, and he had a great competition. Lance Ringnall is not able to perform because of the injury you saw a few moments ago. Let's look at some of the bright spots, though, for his, from his performance in Stuttgart a couple of years ago. Lance was tied for the gold medal in the Goodwill Games this past year. One of his best events is the high bar. He showed wonderful release moves, tricky combinations, and a huge dismount, two twists and two flips. Lance Ringdahl then there as part of the American team there to support him. This was two years ago, but the team to beat is always the Soviet Union. They see the best in the world every day. And a tough task, of course, for the Americans this year as it was then. Here is Jared Hanks on the parallel bars. You saw a 925 in the compulsory. Jared is one of the most explosive and one of the most exciting members of the U.S. team because he does a very high level of difficulty and he shows so much power. He shows the Thomas flares on the end of the parallel bars up to handstand. And of course with the partisan crowd, any little thing that he does that is even re slightly remarkable will be applauded like it is even more remarkable. He has good form. Now this exercise is clean so far. Nothing really surprising in terms of difficulty, but a solid start. Good landing on tuckable back dismount. And as you said, an excellent start. This was their lowest scoring event in the compulsories. He likes it. Let's take another look. Here's that dismount. You can really see how aggressive he is on the landing. He knows every tenth of a point is going to be very important. And, of course, important for him to get a good score, and he did that, considering it's the first competitor, and likely they will score up from there, 9575. Hi, everybody. Meanwhile, on floor exercise, Valery Belenki of the Soviet Union. Belenki was last year's World Cup champion, and he is so strong as an all-around performer. And what an exciting tumbler. Watch this first pass. really has beautiful tumbling technique so perfect and I love that skill the full twist on the second somersault the judges require the gymnast to cover the complete floor area in a routine that lasts between 50 and 70 seconds you see he's going down the side now I watch the second tumbling pass though it's not extremely difficult look at the amplitude or virtuosity as gymnasts call it Beautiful height, beautiful form. Of course, the exercise is primarily tumbling, but the judges require the gymnast to show strength and a balanced move, as he shows here. That bell signals that he has 20 seconds in which to complete the exercise. This is a huge dismount, double layout. Great landing. What difficulty. Valery Belenki of the Soviet Union, and he comes off there rather gingerly. Might have twisted an ankle or come down hard at the very least on a heel, perhaps. Let's talk about coming down hard. He showed some of the most powerful tumbling. And that last tumbling move, we'll get a chance to take a look at that. Boy, there's so much force coming into the floor. It's unbelievable. Here's that second tumbling pass. Watch this. It's a double twist in the air. Look at the height. The perfect form immediately changes direction into a punch front. quite see if that is where he might have hurt himself let's take a look and see if we can see it this time this is definitely where he landed a little bit hard but it's a gorgeous double layout and he was really going for the stuck landing and he just came in a little bit short but boy when you do that it really puts your ankle in an awkward position so Belenke with a tender paw right now but look at his score nine seven two five brilliant Now, how much will that affect them as this competition goes on? Can you shake that off? <laughs> Even if they took one guy out of the competition, they're still probably going to win. They're so deep. But, yeah, he'll be fine. That just stings, and it'll last for a few minutes, but he'll be okay. Remember, you can drop off the low score. However, 
The United States does not have that luxury because of the injury to its sixth team member, Lance Ringnall, in the compulsory. Chris Waller on the parallel walks. I really like Chris's style. The move is called the Diamidoff, the full twist. Here's a good sequence right here. That move is called a Healy twirl. He does two in a row. He's very aggressive throughout this routine. Oh, almost over on that handstand, but a good fight. The U.S. is showing that they're here and they're tough. They're ready to compete. So they had the good first performance by Jared Hanks and now Chris Waller trying to at least, at the very least, equal that. The crowd liked it, but remember it is a partisan crowd. Meanwhile, at the head of the vault, Li Jing of China, perhaps their best. Oh, Li Jing is so explosive and he's so elegant at the same time. He was one of the first gymnasts in the world to perform the Yurchenko style vaulting that we've seen from the women. Let's see if he uses that vault today. Here it comes. Wow. Oh, beautifully done. And as you said, he really combines explosiveness with elegance. Look at the power here he generates. The push off the horse, and then a beautifully executed full twist, and a perfect landing. Lee Jing, and while we await his score, Chris Waller's score on the parallel bars, 9-5. Pretty much in line with Gerard Hanks, and now the score for Lee Jing, 9-7-2-5 on that ball. We'll be back right after this. Silvio Kroll now of Germany on the pommel horse. 9.65 in the compulsory. Silvio opened up with a great move as he traveled all the way across the horse. He really is very aggressive. Notice he swings very quickly. That's impressive to the judges. Here's a good move right up to handstand and a pirouette down. Good exercise so far. Just a couple of little form breaks in the feet. And Silvio Kroll to what I would interpret as polite applause, actually. This crowd either detracted by something else or just not paying much attention to Silvio Kroll or not very pleased with Silvio Kroll. And I don't know whether or not he is. He'll look overjoyed as we await for his score. This is a really good angle to notice how complex the handwork is on the pommel horse. From these double leg circles, he breaks into the flare. And he's going to swing the flare on up to the handstand and then undercut on his way down. Now, you can brush the horse slightly, but it's important that you never break the rhythm of the exercise when you move from the double leg work to the single leg work and back once again to the double leg circles, as you see here. Germany is in second place behind the Soviet Union, but only five hundredths of a point ahead of Japan, so a high score here could help secure that second place position after the first rotation. And not a bad score for Silvio Kroll, 9-8. So it's interesting, the crowd didn't seem to like it, and he didn't seem to like it, but he scored pretty well. Cheney Humphrey now, former UCLA student, good collegian performer, has started to make his mark on the international scene on the parallel ball. And how about that, what a big start. Cheney is very explosive. He has a couple of really exciting moves right here. Oh! What? He almost completely fell off the bars there, but he just powered through and continued. That was great. He's really showing that he's going to just scrap through this routine, obviously. Yeah, he's off. Boy, I tell you, that was tough. He really struggled through that exercise, but it could have been much worse. An excellent recovery. Right here, you can see his hand completely misses the bar, and somehow he gets it back on to continue on with the exercise. That's guts. Very disappointing, though, for Cheney Humphrey. And there's the score, 9-1-5. Good thing he's as strong as he is, because he would have completely fallen off if he weren't. Andreas Wecker of Germany now. 9-7, as you see in the compulsories in this event. Becker is a terrific gymnast. Watch how high he works above the horse in these flares. As he travels across the horse, he hasn't even touched the pommels yet. And he's been back and forth across the horse twice. Beautiful elevation on the scissors. 
back down and once again all the way across the horse without touching the pommels. This is a great exercise. And the crowd appreciating this one too. Andreas Becker on the pommel horse. He likes it. German supporters, and there are many of them, they like it. And Andreas Becker, you would have to think, would score very well here. Pommel horse. He likes it. German supporters, and there are many of them, they like it. And Andreas Becker, you would have to think, would score very well here. An interesting note here, though, this is the first World Championships that Germany is competing as a unified country. All six of the competing gymnasts are from the East, and only the alternate is from the West. There's the score for Andreas Becker at 9.875, and I guess what I have to ask you two is, what didn't he do? Actually, it was a great score, and the judges are keeping the scores down in case there are better routines to come. Scott Keswick of the United States on the parallel bars now. Scott is so aggressive. In every exercise, he shows the maximum difficulty. Oh, great sequence there. And once again, his hand slipped a little like Cheney Humphreys. But he didn't even let it bother him. He just powers through this routine. Back toss. And a tough rotation for the United States on parallel bars. And Keswick finishes his routine. Actually, the U.S. showed me something there. They show that they are really going to fight for everything because there are some mistakes there that could have potentially been disastrous and yet they really push through them and the score is then nine four seven five for keswick here's the way it stands after the first rotation the soviet union leading the pack about to move on to the second rotation the united states will be on the high bar and there is their cheerleader lance ringo on the right of your screen there as they prepare to move in to this event which has served them well but before we get to this let's share the magic for a moment that was the theme of the opening ceremonies and both my partners bart connor and kathy johnson very much a part of these opening ceremonies and they really did define the word spectacular kathy johnson Participants assembled in the city of Indianapolis without question supporting this event. There's Bart Connor, Nadia Komenich. Bart and Nadia co-hosting the evening. The entrance of the American team, always a high point. Cheney Humphrey you see there. Lance Ringall also there. Kim Zameskel. It's the largest world gymnastics championships in the history of the sport. 51 nations represented and more than 500 athletes. The voice of Sandy Patty, five-time Grammy winner with the title song. She can sing it, Indianapolis' own. And Yuri Titov, the really, president of the International Gymnastics Federation. Now a time Federation. in the history, time of new breeze of democracy. I just came from Russia. I bring to you greetings from Russia, from Russia with the love. But I would like that this new democracy would be spread all over the world, and sport will help that. And to get things started officially, the Vice President of the United States, Dan Quayle. In Indianapolis, we have a proud tradition of saying special words before great sporting events, such as, gentlemen, start your engines. So tonight, it is my high honor to say the 26th World Gymnastics Championships are now officially open and the competition may begin. Thank you very much. And the competition, of course, only a part of this whole thing, but ceremonies like this, I think, really get everybody started out truly on a high. <laughs> Torch that seems to accompany just about every major worldwide event like this one. And the symbolic lighting, the obligatory fireworks, and what's left then is to get on with the competition. And that is what we are doing now. We're in the second rotation. These are the final six teams. 
Soviet Union, for all intent, has this thing won. The United States right now sitting in fifth place. Germany, Japan, China competing for the other medal slots. Top 12 teams, of course, will compete in the Olympic Games in Barcelona. Li Ga of China on the parallel bars. As you mentioned, the Soviets are in such a strong position in the lead, but the Chinese team, in my impression, is the only other team in the world that has a chance to rival the Soviets in terms of their style and their difficulty and, most importantly, their execution. Liga is so powerful. Look at that move. Double backflip from under bar swing. Every position is clean and the form is excellent and the difficulty is absolutely outstanding. Pike double. Oh, oh and he fell. Oh. Unfortunately, the Chinese at times have been inconsistent, particularly at very important moments like at the World Championships. That was the strangest fall. The whole exercise was so clean. He over-rotated the dismount. But before that, notice the form and the body line and all the positions are very clean. Let's see if we can find out what happened. It's a double backflip in the pike position. It's a difficult landing, but he pulled it just too far and his legs were locked. Just That's couldn't seem to deduction. catch it. Big deduction that will cost his team, not to mention himself. 9-1-5 for Liga. And remember though, all the teams in this competition, with the exception of the United States, oh. do have the possibility of dropping off their low score. So it won't hurt the Chinese too badly. Valery Liukin of the Soviet Union. Liukin is so well known for his explosive work on the floor, but all of his events, the level of difficulty is at the maximum. Crowd very appreciative of what these Soviet gymnasts can do. You can hear them in the background. This routine is just packed with difficult moves. One pommel work, as you notice there. It's a long exercise. Fast and aggressive, very quick. Up to the handstand, strong finish. Larry Liukin. Completely different feeling about the Soviets. They seem pretty relaxed when you have that kind of lead. It's easy to settle down and just let it fly. And the American crowd here, despite cheering for the United States, very appreciative of the finest that there is in this sport. This move here is the Thomas Flair as he travels across the horse without using the pommel. He also twists his body back against the direction of the flair. Very complex. Look at how high his hips are above the pommels. The single leg work is a requirement. He picks up back into flares. Twists out to the end and off in a handstand. Great finish. And the score then for Valery Liuk of the Soviet Union. And he still will have to wait there. It is 9-8 now on the pommel horse for Liuk. And, and that's kind of an in-your-face for Cheney Umphrey, the United States now, as he prepares for his competition on the high bar. Cheney has a very difficult combination of release moves. We'll see he's going to do three moves in a row. Very risky. Americans have posted a 9.475 and a 9.575 so far. Here comes that sequence. There's one, two, and three. Well done in perfect form. So far this exercise is just right on. Strong dismount. And he held it. Cheney Humphrey making amends for a less than spectacular routine on parallel bars. Comes right back on a high bar. He loves it. Here's that sequence. These moves are called reverse hex. He flies back over the bar. Here's the second one. Notice he's in pike position. And he goes right into the third release move. It's called a ginger. He's the perfect distance from the bar. So Cheney Humphrey scored 9-7-2-5 on the high bar.
Not bad after this. Yeah. This. Welcome back, Barry Tompkins, Kathy Johnson, Bart Connor. We're looking at Chris Waller now, preparing for the high bar. And the crowd chanting USA. This is a team competition, remember. This is one of Chris Waller's best events. He has a couple of important sequences in here. One of them comes right here at the beginning. It's in a one-arm giant swing. Notice he's going to twist a full turn and then back the other direction. Here it comes. Full turn and then back. You kind of wind up and then unwind. Not bad. It's very complex. To save it. What'll that cost him? Because it was a large step. If you take a small step, it's usually... This mount, one of the most difficult ones being done in the competition. Watch, it's two flips and two twists. He does it in tuck position. And unfortunately, he has to take that step back. And as Bart said, it'll cost about two-tenths of a point. And there's the score for Chris Waller. So that cost him two-tenths. Otherwise, a pretty good routine. Nine, six, five. The score for Waller. He's upset with himself. Meanwhile, Igor Korobchinsky, all-around champion at Stuttgart two years ago on the pommel horse. Like all the Soviets, Korobchinsky shows plenty of difficulty in this exercise. And he's improved on the pommel horse. He was a little tight two years ago in Stuttgart, but he's doing more difficulty, and his body line is a little straighter than it used to be. The judges look for the body to swing from the shoulders all the way down through the toes as one complete unit. Beautiful flares. Up to a handstand, pirouette. Oh! Oh, actually fell off. That's a huge it. mistake. Should cost him, what, five tenths? Half a point, and he'll complete the exercise, but his chances in the all-around are wiped out. And what a shame. The fall occurred right before the dismount. Needless to say, a disappointed to Igor Korobchinsky. He's saying, what did I do? What am I going to do? See, he didn't know I speak Russian. <laughs> the top three on each team get to go to the all-around finals, and if Korobchinsky doesn't get a good score here, which he won't, he won't make it to the all-around finals for the Soviet team. Let's see what happens. This is a really difficult move. A handstand, full pirouette, and he's going to continue back down into the Thomas Flair, and you see his right hand is just too far back on the pommel and he can't continue. What a disappointment for the world all-around champion. Five-tenths of a point, so right off the top, the highest he could score is a 9.5. Discussion going on here. That is the judge from Mexico. Francis Allen, the coach of the United States, when we had an opportunity to talk with him about his feelings about the judging here was outspoken. When you come to one of these events, the best thing is to see the team come out together, compete together, get it all worked together, and get off the floor. The judges and the concept of the, of the compulsory, and the compulsory as it stands now is there are three compulsory events on one day, and you get to enter one guy in each one of the three. Then the next day, you enter one of the three guys in the next three day, three day, or that day's events. So you're competing one guy, they clear the floor, then you bring another group in, they clear the floor, bring another group in, well, the, the committee said that they thought that would eliminate cheating, would eliminate the bias, would eliminate because they won't know who's out there. <laughs> Give me a break. They know who's out there. I mean, it's pretty funny when you see one country time in and time again, time in and time out again. When an American goes up, he's as low as he can possibly be. We had some guys that scored 9-4s. There's one guy that's at 9-1 every time. Then when his team comes up, it's the other way. If the panel, that is the group, we call, they call them the panel. If the panel's average drops down to 9.2, he's up to 9.5. Well, he's, he's cheating. That's all there is to it. Oh, he's not, I, don't, I shouldn't call it cheating. Whatever you want to call it. I, I, I prefer cheating, but whatever you want to call it. He's, he's not evaluating the performances as we think they should be evaluated. We think they should be evaluated just as they're done. Put them out there, evaluate them. If you don't win, you don't win. But at least get a fair evaluation.
Francis Allen of the United States. The story on that, incidentally, was that the Mexican judge had only taken off four-tenths of a point. As Kathy Johnson pointed out, merely falling off the horse cost him five-tenths of a point. So he gave a score that you just can't give. It's that simple. The score for Kordovchinsky, 9-4 after all is said and done. End of case, huh? Scott Keswick now, the United States on a high bar. Scott has a very big move in the routine. It's called a Kovacs. It's a double backflip over the bar, and it comes up right here. All right. On all the apparatus, Scott shows a really aggressive style. He's quick. He tries to top off every move right to the handstand. The straddle giant is called a stalder. Watch this, it's going to be a triple backflip. Got it! Oh, what a landing. Listen to the crowd. And that landing came after an extremely difficult dismount. Triple back. Really some great performances by these American guys on the high bar. This triple is terrific. He's really high. He's in a little close to the bar, but look how early he finishes and just drops into the landing. That's the best high bar routine of his life. And you see that t-shirt behind him said it only takes, on the back it says, five. And you mentioned they don't have Lance Ringdahl. It only takes five. That's the theme of this American team, 9-8 for Scott Keswick on the high bar. Back to reality. Valery Balenki on the pommel horse from the Soviet Union. We saw earlier a piece of videotape from Valentin Mogilny of the Soviet Union on the pommel horse. This is perhaps the one other gymnast in the world that rivals Mogilny in terms of difficulty and execution. He is all over this pommel horse with the most complex work. Look at the form. His legs are perfectly tight. Excellent toe point. And what elevation on that dismount. Big time. And again, this knowledgeable gymnastics crowd really giving credit where it's due to the Soviet team, and particularly in this case, to Valery Balenki. He has incredible upper body strength. Really enables him to swing so high above the pommels. That elevation is something that judges are really looking for. He still has a little bit of a tender ankle, too. So I'm winced there. That's from the floor exercise you saw earlier. This is the sequence where he goes up to handstand from the flares. Great transition from the double leg work to the single leg work. Nine. Andrea. And as great as Balenki is on the pommel horse. Great transition from the double leg work to the single leg work. Nine, nine, the score for Balenki. Andreas Becker now on the ring. And as great as Balenki is on the pommel horse, Becker is on the ring. This is his specialty. He was robbed two years ago at the World Championships in the finals. He didn't win the gold in the rings. Many thought that he should. Watch this combination. It's an inverted iron cross, and he presses back to a handstand. This is a move called a Maltese cross. Look at the power in the shoulder joint. An iron cross, an L cross. What's great about his exercise is he's not only very strong, but he shows wonderful swing work. Look at the beautiful line and fluid motion in the front giant swings. Here's a big dismount. Look oh, double twisting, double back. Excellent work. Beautiful strength and beautiful swing. A little half step back on the dismount. Andreas Becker of Germany in his specialty, the rings. What's amazing about Becker, he's 5'4 and 128 pounds. It's deceiving because he looks so incredibly strong in the upper body. He's only 128 pounds. He's so strong, but he also swings well. This is the double twisting, double back dismount. There's a lot happening in the air. A lot to get done before you hit that ground. 
So Andreas Becker now awaits his score, and there it is, 9-7-2-5 for Becker. So we have now completed two rotations, and we take a look at the standing. Soviet Union clearly in front. The battle seems joined for second and third. Germany, China, and Japan fight it out. We'll be back. Well, just a reminder that this is the men's team competition, but one week from tonight, you will be watching the women's competition from here in Indianapolis. And what a competition it promises to be. 9 o'clock Eastern Time, October 18th, right here on ESPN. Meanwhile, Chris Waller preparing for his floor exercise. And right now, Kathy Johnson is with some interested observers. Betty and Fred, I know you've been to a lot of competitions around. Any that approach this? Nothing. No, this is uh, really exciting. Nothing comes close to this one, that's for sure. There's a lot of support here being in the United States, but be honest, how nervous do you get when Chris is out there performing? Not in a competition like that. I don't really get that nervous because when it gets that big, you just have to be plain lucky, and we know that they're all good. So I think all the boys are doing the best, and you just accept what happens is at this level, anything can happen. What does mom feel? Well, I feel pretty much the same way. I think the worst times were when he kept falling off high bars, uh, but he was still first couple of years in college. But you still get nervous, yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> well, good luck. Oh, thank you. All right, thanks very much, Kathy. Well, kind of a realistic approach, I think, from the parents of Chris Waller. That's right, and Chris has a difficult floor routine for him. Oh, just a little over on that mount. That was a double back with a full twist. And I think if you look at the U.S. team in general on the floor exercise, this is where the U.S. team needs some improvement. Although Chris has some good tumbling, and he has a really good sequence coming up here, in terms of the overall level of difficulty in the tumbling, the U.S. team is nowhere near the Chinese and the Soviets. And of late, the Koreans, they have come on very strong. Here's a great move coming up here. It's a plunge, but a reverse plunge. Notice he arches all the way over and his legs are parallel to the floor. That is really tough. Great flexibility and incredible strength. Now keep in mind his difficulty in the exercise is adequate. But when you talk about winning at the world championship level and competing with the best Soviets and Chinese, you need more difficult tumbling runs. There's a double back. Just a little shorter rotation. I might add, too, that that mat, while it sounds like it's really hard, actually is pretty springy. I think the sound's a little bit misleading here. That's right. There are four-inch springs under there and then two inches of foam and then carpeting. It's pretty springy. He gets into a little trouble here on this opening tumbling run this is a full twisting double back not quite as high as he needs to be and he pulls it around too far so if he over rotates that's a couple of tenths of a point maybe three tenths of a point deduction can't fool the judges at this level i take it tumbling is the basis of all gymnastics and the u.s team needs to be a little stronger there chris waller you saw his score 9.175 as we look at yoon su han of korea on the pommel horse and the Koreans have impressed everyone here. They have wonderful difficulty. And they're a deep team. So far, this routine is very clean. Nothing unusual, but he is fulfilling all the requirements. Oh, this is good. He travels across the horse in the flare. Strong finish for Yoon Soo Han of Korea. One of a very balanced Korean team. And we will, of course, bring you up to date on his score. But right now, let's take you over to the high bar where the very powerful Chinese team. This is Li Xiao Shuang. The Chinese have an incredibly daring set of high bar routines. Oh! Scores for Yun Su Han while Li Xiao Shuang gets himself together again. 9 6 for Yun Su Han. That was a strange mistake. He looked like he caught the bar exactly where he wanted it. Let's see if we can see what happened. 
He seemed to slip, didn't he? Yeah, it looked like he caught right where he needed it. Maybe his right hand didn't get the hand guard in the right position as he went over the bar, but he certainly was right where he wanted to be. He's going to do it again. That much better this time. And he followed it up with a second reverse heck. Here's a good opportunity to look at the body line of the Chinese. Notice the long, fluid swing, perfect form, beautiful movement. Wow, look at the height on that dismount. And stuck it. They are so explosive. Li Shuang of China. And we will tell you his score while we watch Valery Lyukin of the Soviet Union on the rings. Lyukin is having a great competition for the Soviet team so far. And this is one of his best events because of the strength work. There's a plunge and a bounce to an Olympic cross and he switches sides to the other Olympic cross and finishes with another cross and what we call a pull out to an L. Inverted iron cross. So far, this routine is absolutely packed with strength. Now he has to fulfill the requirement of doing a swing to a handstand. Li Sha Shuang on the high bar, 9-2. That's a big dismount. A little bit of a hop, but not too bad. Remember, the Soviet Union, for all intent, has this competition won, and right now it is looking like Germany will be able to hold on to second place. So the battle really is being waged for third. And that battle seems to be between Japan and China. Daisuke Nishikawa of Japan on the parallel bars. The Japanese team edged out the Chinese team in 88 at the Olympics in Seoul. Nishikawa was one of the members of that Olympic team. The Japanese dominated men's gymnastics for nearly 20 years up until 1979. And then the Soviets took over the world championship and the Olympic titles and haven't looked back since. Valery Lyukin, one of the reasons they're not looking back, 985, a moment ago you saw him on the rings. This exercise is very nice. Those moves are called back tosses to a handstand. Strong performance for Nishikawa, just a little short on that dismount. So Nishikawa of Japan trying to keep his country in the hunt for the bronze medal. They are in a battle with China, very close right now. The judges require the gymnast to show work below the bar. As you notice, he goes below the bar there on a giant swing. And some of the work has to be done above the bars, as you notice there. There's the back toss, right to a handstand, clean line, and great form on that dismount. And so the scores now for Daisuke Nishikawa of Japan, 9-6-5, and we have now come to the end of three rotations, and we have had some changes amongst the leaders. The Soviets continue to be in first place, and comfortably so. They will win the gold. Germany in second. Japan and China fighting it out for third. The United States has now fallen behind Korea in the battle for fifth. <laughs> Some of the Korean fans lending new meaning to the term soul music. <laughs> Very good performance, and you can see fans from all over the world, literally. You see those headsets, incidentally? It's kind of a unique idea being done here at Indianapolis, and here's what it is. Local radio station, gentlemen, GCR, keeping the fans here in the arena, and in fact, all through Indianapolis, posted on exactly what is happening. It's a great idea because the fans sit in the audience. There's a lot of things happening. They can actually keep up to speed with who these people are and a little biographical information about some of these performers and it really adds to the whole event really good idea and a lot of the people in the crowd here as you can see that's sandy woolsey an alternate on the women's team one of the top finishers for the u.s at the world championships in 89. 
Well, one of the things that I'm sure the radio people here are telling the folks in the arena is that Yutaka Ihara now getting back on the bar after a pretty nasty fall on the high bar. And we'll show you what happened in a minute. He's got to finish his exercise. Remember, he loses a half a point deduction, and he has to continue from where he fell off. He's got a big dismount. Here it comes. Triple back. Whoa. Not the most comfortable landing, but he managed to stick it. If you think that landing will knock your fillings loose, where do you see this one? This is unbelievable. He's going to do a very difficult move here. Begins like a reverse hack and then goes into a front flip. And watch this crash. Ow. This move is so seldom done because of its level of difficulty. In fact, it was invented by a Chinese gymnast and it's called a Shao. So as you can see, that 875 will hurt the Japanese team. They've had some low scores on this rotation so far, so Atakeda needs to put together a great performance if they hope to stay in this team race. And only drop off one of the scores, remember. Oh, there's a great move right at the beginning. A little close on that release move. Obviously playing it safe because the other Japanese team members had some trouble. He's going conservative. And a triple again. Boy, that was an easy triple. No problem at all. Great height off the bar. So Yoshiaki Hatakida trying to keep his team in the hunt for the bronze medal. And seemed to do a pretty good job of it. Meanwhile, we go to floor exercise. Li Jing of China. He is just really exciting to watch because his work is so effortless. Look at that. A double twisting, double backflip for the first tumbling run. That's new for him. In my impression, the Chinese are so well coached. They have excellent flexibility. Their technique in every case is terrific. 9575, the score for Yoshiaki Hatakita of Japan a moment ago on the high bar. Look at how clean his body line is in the handstand. They really combine all the necessary attributes becoming a top level gymnast and they combine it so well. Make everything look easy. Last tumbling run. Bull twisting double back. A couple of hops there on the landing. A tough dismount. So that should cost him a little bit, you would have to think. Probably a tenth of a point, perhaps two tenths of a point, because he was a little shorter rotation and had to hop. But once again, he was doing one of the more difficult moves you can do at the end of the routine. Watch this first tumbling run, though. This is a double backflip with two twists. Boy, that's a lot of tricks. And as you mentioned, Kathy, he makes it easily. It's all technique. This is that dismount. Full twisting, double back. You can see he's just a little short of rotation, and he has to hop twice forward. So Li Jing, the score for him, 9-5-5. Five, five. Still more to come, so don't go away. Barry Tompkins with Bart Connor, Kathy Johnson. We are in Indianapolis, and these are the World Gymnastics Championships. Scott Keswick now in this fourth rotation as the race is really joined between Japan and China for the bronze medal. Scott tries a lot of difficulty in all... Oh! Right off the bat, he has a mistake. As I was saying, Scott always does full-level difficulty in all of his routines and never waters down. That's one of the good things about Scott is whether it's a dual meet against San Jose State or whether it's the World Championships, he does full-on routines every time. And unfortunately, that was his second ball. He fell on the last event, the floor exercise, and only scored a 9.05.
So he has to get himself together now and finish this routine without any problems. There's a great sequence there. Just a little tentative going up to the handstand. Scott is very intense, very aggressive as a performer. And that's one of the most impressive things about his style. He really attacks. Unfortunately, he got just a little out of control at the early part of that routine. Then we can see what happened. He's going to open with a sequence where he travels across the horse, down the length of the horse. Facing this direction is called loops, looking down the length of the horse. He's going to travel up to the first pommel. So far, so good. Well, it looks like it's kind of hard to say whether that left hand just didn't get in the right position as he swung around for the behind-the-back work, but that's tough. 9-2 the score for Scott Keswick. One I'm sure he would like to have back and sold by his teammates. Meanwhile, Daisuke Nishikawa of Japan on the high bar, and they have had their problems in this particular rotation. They have been struggling, and they have a great team, but for some reason they've been very inconsistent over here. Nishikawa has a huge move coming up right here. Oh! Oh, what a shame. The Japanese are really folding on this event. They've been really inconsistent over here on high bar. And as you mentioned, the top five scores count. They had an 8.75 already. They hope to drop that score. He'll need to get back on the equipment and hopefully get at least better than an 8.75. This is going to hurt the Japanese team a lot. Very tough rotation so far on high bar. The Japanese, there is the Japanese team as they watch Daisuke Nishikawa try this again. to continue from the point where he fell. Next release move, well done. Beautiful reverse heck with the legs together. He's back into the rhythm of routine. Here's the dismount, full twisting double bat. Great landing. Everything but the fall, but certainly the fall is going to cost him. Maybe we can see what happened. This move that he does is called a Gaylord, invented by Mitch Gaylord from the U.S. team. It's essentially like doing a one-and-a-half flip off a diving board. You go over, and you're going in head first, and you grab the bar as you go by. Wow. Unfortunately, he didn't get his hands on the bar. He was actually above the grip on his arm. Luckily, salvage okay. the routine. Yeah, salvage the routine, though, pretty much. 9-3, as you saw. Not bad, considering the consequences that he underwent. Li Sha Shuang, China and Floor Exercise. Wait till you see this guy tell me. <laughs> Full twisting double back, laid out position. They have so much flair when they work. Everything is fully extended. They show complete amplitude. that he does is called a Gaylord, invented by Mitch Gaylord from the U.S. team. It's essentially like doing a one-and-a-half flip off a diving board. You go over, and you're going in head first, and you grab the bar as you go by. Wow. Unfortunately, he didn't get his hands on the bar. He was actually above the grip on his arm. Luckily, salvage okay. the routine. Yeah, salvage the routine, though, pretty much. 9-3, as you saw. Not bad, considering the consequences that he underwent. Li Sha Shuang. China and four exercise. Wait till you see this guy tell me. <laughs> Full twisting double back, laid out position. They have so much flair when they work. Everything is fully extended. They show complete amplitude. Chinese have had so many great tumblers. Li Ning, Olympic champion in 84. Tong Fei, Li Yue Zhu. Lo Yun, 
They have had the best tumblers in the world for the last several years. And as we mentioned earlier, tumbling is really the basis of all gymnastics. So if you're great in floor exercise, you tend to be great on all the other apparatus. Whoa! <laughs> Finishes with a double layout. Just one step on that landing. Very so high degree of difficulty in that routine. Has to be very happy with it. Lee Sha Shuang. And remember, the Japanese have faltered on high bar, and they are in a battle with the Chinese for the bronze medal. And you have to think the Chinese gained a lot of ground right here. 9-8 the score for Li Shuang, And China getting right into the thick of it now. Watch this flared position right after the twist, going into the second somersault. That's what makes it exceptional. And the scores, as we mentioned, for Li Shuang, 9-8 in floor exercise. When we come back, the next rotation, the United States will be on the rings, but the battle still between the Chinese and Japan for third. Are you looking for the perfect gift for the man on your Christmas list? Take this simple quiz. Does someone you know like sports? States now on the rings in this fifth rotation, Jared Hanks for the U.S. Jared, the leader of the University of Oklahoma NCAA championship team this year. Jared is so talented and he really is very strong and you can see he has good control of the rings. His exercise is very clean but Oh, that's a great move. A Maltese cross. But one thing about Jared's style is he doesn't take any unusual risks on rings. It's a clean exercise, but nothing out of the ordinary. I don't think he'll score that well just because of that. You need to show some originality. This is perhaps the best part of the routine. He shows the move there, the Maltese cross, which is a combination of an iron cross and a plange where your body is parallel to the floor. Then he goes right through to the dismount. This is a United States team that has been together for quite a period of time. They have, needless to say, gotten very close. Great camaraderie on this team, and a loss of Lance Ringnold, of course, really hurts them. Hurts them both from an emotional standpoint and from a physical standpoint. Just trying to get it done without a very important link. But even so, remember, this is a team that finished eighth in Stuttgart and certainly will do better than that as we move now to the pommel horse in Li Zhaozhuang. This sequence is great. Look at the elevation above the horse and the aggressiveness. Once again, the Chinese have superb technique. That's going to score well. Great routine for Li Zhaozhuang of China. Routinely great, I might add. He's been excellent in just about every event today a real trend on the pommel horse is to work across the horse and notice he's not using the pommels he's working in the flare and he's twisting his body back against the direction but he hasn't touched the pommels it takes tremendous elevation the pommels are about five inches above the leather now three areas that the judges look for risk originality and virtuosity the chinese really show all three they take big risks on big skills they have original skills, but everything is so big in terms of amplitude and style. And that's where the virtuosity comes in. And that translates to a 9-8 for Li Xiaoshuang. Remember, the Chinese creeping ever so close to the Japanese now in the battle for third. They started this fifth rotation just four-tenths of a point behind as a team. Chris Waller now, the United States on rings. Chris open with a back kip to a cross and a kip to an L-cross. A lot of gymnasts do their strength moves right at the beginning of the routine when they're fresh, and then they do the swing moves. Chris was a bronze medalist in the Goodwill Games last year on the steel rings. Giant swing to handstand, that's a requirement. There's that Yamawaki. Little swing in the rings. 
Oh, and he does a great job in stopping the swing on that front giant. Notice the rings are completely steady. Beautifully landed double layout. Chris has competed so well so far in this competition. To the joy of a whole room full of American supporters here. And right now, they are looking at Li Jing on the pommel horse. China, remember, trying to pick up the bronze medal. The Soviet Union is going to win it. Germany, about whom we haven't spoken very much, firmly entrenched in second place. The Americans in a battle with Korea for the fifth position. Watch this sequence as he travels across the horse. Scores for Chris Waller, 9-5-5 five, five on the ring. In order to get big scores, you have to show unusual sequences, take some risks. Oh, just a little bit of a bobble there. Otherwise, a terrific routine. Li Jing of China, he likes it. <laughs> he knew he did a little tap dance on the end of the horse there to keep the rhythm going. No real deduction. And when the judges take a look at all of the difficulty in this exercise, they're going to like it. Look at the body line. Notice how straight his body is. There's the little tap dance. He reached his right hand in to catch his balance, but very few people would catch that minor deduction. That's going to be a great score. And we'll see. And there it is, 9-9 nine, nine for Li Jing. That is the highest score we have seen on any apparatus in any rotation so far in the team competition. Li Jing of China, and China right now is sitting pretty. There are 28 teams in the NFL, over 1,200 players, some good, some better, yet they all share. And we welcome you back to Indianapolis. These are the 1991 World Gymnastics Championships. Andreas Wecker now, still in the fifth rotation, on the high bar. Germany comfortably in second place. Becker, by the way, in 1989, earned the title of Sportsman of the Year in East Germany. And since there's no more East Germany, he is the last man to ever win that title. He's got a big move coming up here. It's a double back over the bar. Great. He's going to do it again. Here it comes. <laughs> and one more release move. Really aggressive style. The crowd loves it. Watch the style right here. Deep pipe and lifts his head. All he has left is the triple. Oh, oh. he took it way out. Oh, no. Big deduction there at the end. He really did kind of sling it forward. He knows it. Really a shame because he really seemed to be right on the rest of his routine. You can see right as he releases the bar, how far he is traveling away from the bar. There is no way he can get his feet underneath him to make that landing. And 9-5 the score for Becker. And how much did he lose on that landing? Well, three, four tenths for sure. Cheney Humphrey of the United States on the rings. Talking about powerful athletes. Look at that, a forward roll right to a cross and a pull out to an L. This is certainly one of Cheney's best events. Beautiful work, right up to the handstand. Great control of the rings. Into this mount. And a full twisting double back. Excellent routine. So Cheney Humphrey, in one of his best disciplines, should score well for the United States. Really is amazing the strength that he shows on this routine and also keeping the ring so perfectly still. The dismount is actually a full in pike back flip out, a full in the first flip, and there's a pike back flip in the second flip. Makes it easy. So the score for Cheney Humphrey, 9.75. He's got to like that. Meanwhile, the Chinese, who, as we mentioned, are 
closing in very quickly on the Japanese for the bronze medal. Guo Lin Yao. Keep in mind now, the Chinese, like any other team in the competition, saved their best for last. We saw Li Jing get a 9-9 just a moment ago. Guo Lin Yao is even a little longer in body line. Beautiful form. Oh, very difficult sequence over the pommel. This is an incredibly difficult sequence to do at the end of the routine when you're tired. And up to handstand. Wow. As a matter of fact, Wow Lin Yao. <laughs> they have been amazing on these last two events, the floor exercise and pommel horse. While the Japanese are struggling, the Chinese are just really pouring it on. Now they are really on a roll right now. When you talk about elevation over the pommels, look at how high his hips are as he reaches all the way from one end across to the other end. As you mentioned, Kathy, their moves are just so big. It's what we call amplitude in gymnastics. The bigness of a skill, the height above the horse, So for Guo Lin Yao, 9, 8, 7, 5. Not quite up to that of Li Jing. Not bad. <laughs> Barry Tompkins, Bart Connor, Kathy Johnson. These are the World Gymnastics Championships. We're at the Hoosier Dome here in Indianapolis. The Soviets continue to have things their way. Frank Keswick, the elder Keswick, if you will, watching his son Scott Keswick prepare to do his thing on the rings. The Elder Keswick. Sounds like Charles Dickens, doesn't it? Scotty is known among the U.S. teammates as the king of the rings, the three-time U.S. national champion on the rings. He's very confident up there. Even when he was a young man in Las Vegas when he was coached by Dusty Ritter, he showed incredible strength, as you can see here, inverted iron cross. Excellent control. Stops it dead in a handstand. There's a big dismount. Whoa, double twisting double back. One of just a few done in the competition. Dad liked it. Crowd liked it. Well, the judges like it. It's hard to tell how difficult this dismount is because he does it so easily, but to crank two flips and two twists. It's very, very difficult. The score for Scott Keswick, 9-7-7-5. That will certainly help his team. And again, team is the operable word here. It is a team competition, and here is the hot team of the moment. The Chinese, we mentioned earlier, they've been in a battle for the bronze medal with Japan. Well, right now, Germany best start looking over its shoulder because China's coming, and Germany's going in the other direction. They've had some problems in this rotation on high bar. Not so for the Chinese. Li Chun Yang on the pommel horse. Li Chung Yang is brilliant on the pommel horse. He's more known for his work on the high bar. He was the world champion two years ago. We saw him make a mistake here earlier today. But being last up on the Chinese team, their lowest score to this point is a 9.725 and their highest a 9.9. And once again, another great exercise. Not gonna hurt them at all, it should help them. Meanwhile, we talk about team competition. The Soviets are clearly gonna win the gold medal. Here's another part of the reason that they will. Grigory Misutin. Misutin is one of the favorites of the Soviet coach Arkhayev, particularly because he has such good style. And a 9-8 for Chunyang on the pommel horse. So the Chinese now closing in on the Germans for second. All of their scores have been between 9-8 and 9-9 now, the ones that count. And for Misutin, routinely outstanding. You can see the scene here as the Hoosier Dome has been turned in really to one arena where everything is happening and another arena where everything, everybody prepares for everything to happen. It's the Soviet Union with Germany and China is coming. Well, the United States now in its final rotation on the vault. This is Patrick Kirksey. Graduate of the University of Nebraska. He's performing a Kazamatsu. 
Very well done. Just that step on the landing. That will be a slight deduction. He's come a long way from the Atlanta School of Gymnastics where he and I both trained many years ago. It's been fun watching him develop from a skinny little kid into a fine gymnast. A and lot likewise, of power. Likewise, his team has come a long way. The United States, as we mentioned, finishing eighth in this particular event. At Stuttgart two years ago, they will be at the very least sixth in this competition. Right now, the show, besides the Soviets who will win the gold, belongs to the Chinese. This is Li Xiaoshuang on the rings, and the Germans just simply have not gotten it done in the past two rotations. We saw him on the floor exercise get a 9.8 a couple of rotations before, and this event for him is just terrific. He is strong has excellent control look at that l cross it doesn't even look like it's hard for him good chinese. rhythm he hits all the positions just right the chinese do have one low score on this event that they hope to drop with this performance it's kind of the gymnast eye view of the dismount oh beautifully done Great body position. You can really see the perfect form from that angle. And that should just about do it for the Chinese so far as second place is concerned. They really have been just unbelievable in the floor exercise, the pommel horse, and the rings. Their last three events. We saw them have all kinds of trouble on the high bar. And likewise, the Germans have gone the other way in the last three events but particularly so on the high bar and on the discipline they are in in this sixth and final rotation, that being the floor exercise. So joy reigning amongst the Chinese team right now. Li Xiaoshuang, 9-9 nine, nine on the rings, and that's the final nail in the coffin so far as the Germans are concerned. This is Andreas Becker on floor exercise, but it really doesn't matter what he does. They have had some woeful scores, frankly, on floor X to this point, a 9.575, a 9.425, a 9.475, there was 1.97, and a 9.2, so the Germans have just come apart. Andreas Becker is such a complete gymnast. He was fourth in the all-around at the World Championships a couple of years ago, and he really doesn't have a weak event, but if you had to pick apart his floor exercise, he doesn't tumble with the difficulty that you see from some of the Chinese or the Soviets. He has great style. Watch this wide arm press to a handstand. Tim Daggett from the U.S. team used that move. Hey, Reifart, the level of difficulty in this routine really isn't up to par with the top gymnasts. You'll notice here on his dismount, he truly performs to his potential. Finishes with a full twisting double bat. Oh, big hop on the landing. <laughs> Almost went out of bounds. Saved it, though. Kept it in bounds. That was the best part of the routine. High level of difficulty in the dismount. And this really speaks well for him. He truly uses technique to pull this off. At the end of his routine, when the gymnast is tired, it's the same pass that he used in his first tumbling run. And so Andreas Becker with a score of 9.750. A pretty good score, but too little too late for the Germans who will have to settle for the bronze medal here. The Soviets will win the gold, and the Chinese with two wonderful rotations, in fact, three wonderful rotations, will try to finish it up with a flourish now. Li Jing on the rings. He opens with a back kip to an iron cross. Uh, great strength combination. L cross, press to an L and a press to a handstand. Remember, the judges need to see the gymnast do a press to a handstand as well as a swing to a handstand. There's the inverted iron cross. And that move there is a swing to a handstand.
is just a little shaky, trying to control the rings. You'll notice they're swinging. Slight deductions. Strong finish, though. Stuck the landing perfectly. Li Jing closes it out in brilliant fashion for the Chinese. But the story, once again, in the team competition was the Soviet Union. We'll be back. Well, once again, Bart, it is a team competition, and you simply will not find a better team than the Soviets. While we're away, Vitaly Sherbo just kind of putting the icing on the cake for this team. And the Soviets are so sharp. They always do excellent exercises with full-level difficulty. And in many cases, they take advantage of the opportunity at a meet like the World Championships to introduce new tricks and really take the sport to a new level. Sherbo has done that over the last couple of years. He was the Goodwill Games all-around champion. Can they be beat in the Olympic Games? I just don't think so. I think they could bring a whole new team to Barcelona, other than the six that compete here and still win. They're that deep. And now you have to wonder what the future, of course, of team gymnastics in the Soviet Union will be, with the Soviet Union being as fragmented as it now has become. Well, as you mentioned, the top 12 teams from here will compete in the Olympic Games in Barcelona. And in gymnastics, particularly, the Soviet Union will have to compete as one they will not be able to break up into the different republics because they didn't qualify as such, but we all have to wonder if the next major event, the Georgians will be winning and the Ukrainians will be winning, and that moves everybody else in the world down a few spots as well. Every republic could have a wonderful team. Really is going to be very interesting. So the Soviet Union, really the story, but I'll tell you what, nothing to hang your head about if you're on the United States team. Kathy Johnson right now with Scott Kesman. Scott, a lot of added pressure because Lance Ringnald not in the competition. What kind of effect do you think that had on the team? Well, I think uh, everyone was the same way. We, we felt a little added pressure, but we tried not to change our game plan. We didn't want to hold back. We tried to make up ground rather than just hold our place, and we were just aggressive, and we, we had a few mistakes, and it cost us, but uh, I'm real proud of this team. We stuck together, and I think we did a good job. Some unbelievable highs, but there were those lows. How difficult was it coming back from the lows to come up with what you did say on rings? It's, uh, you just have to dig down. You know, there, there's more than one meet involved here. There's all-around finals and, and event finals. And so that's what I tried to do. I tried to pick myself back up for the team and for myself. And I'm real happy about the last two events coming back. That was a big plus for me. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. 12 teams go to the Olympic Games. Here are the 12. Soviet Union wins the gold yet another time. China, brilliant for second. They get the silver. Germany wins the bronze. Then it's Japan, more than creditable fifth for the United States. Korea, Italy, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Switzerland, and Great Britain. They'll all see you in Barcelona. The 1991 World Gymnastics Championships from Indianapolis were brought to you today by Diet Coke. You're going to drink it just for the taste of it. And by Bud Dry. Dry brewed so it drinks light yet satisfies completely. What we've seen here tonight is an assemblage of athletes. Not just ordinary athletes, mind you. Oh, maybe Li Jing might have trouble with a curveball, and perhaps Igor Korovchinsky might not be able to run down Barry Sanders. But I think you'll agree these are amongst the best athletes in the world. It's a little bit of everything that goes into the making of this sport, making it the spectacle it is. You want speed? Imagine Carl Lewis finishing a race with two and a half twists and landing solidly on two feet, rather like the ball. You want athleticism? Imagine Sergei Bubka pole vaulting and coming down with a triple flip sort of like the high bar. You want grace? Think about a slam dunk, followed by a handstand, followed by a double backflip. Something like what we saw in Florex. The pommel horse and rings take skills that ask for part Hulk Hogan, part Mikhail Bereshnikov. You want great athletes? You got gymnastics. For Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson, I'm Barry Tompkins. See you next time.